This presentation marks the 125th birthday of the founding of the Lunetli Photographic Society. It takes a look at the role photography has played in the history of Lunetli over the 125 years since the formation of the society. It examines the commercial side of photography in the town, the input of amateur photographers, and in particular the long history of the Lunetli Photographic Society. When the Society was first established in 1891, the art and science of photography was new and exciting, and the town of Llanetli had many active commercial and amateur photographers. These photographers of the late 19th century purchased their supplies from the local chemist shops. One of the most popular was Wesley Jones, chemist and registered surgeon dentist, and his shop was located on the right-hand side of the upper end of Stepney Street. This shop, with two large display windows, had a chemist's department, a fancy goods section, and a fully equipped dental surgery at the back of the shop. Chemicals, dry plates, developing solutions and mounts could also be bought at Randall and Sons, located in Vaughan Street, Llanetli. And by the 1880s, these outlets were doing a very lucrative trade. In the 1880s, there were many enthusiastic amateur photographers in Llanetli, and Mr. John Daniel, himself an enthusiastic photographer, who had been involved in photography for some years, began bringing together others with a similar enthusiasm with the idea of forming a society. On May the 14th, 1891, John Daniel called a meeting at the school boardroom to discuss with others the idea of forming a photographic society in Llanetli. In his opening speech, John Daniel explained that he had been an amateur photographer for many years, but had worked in isolation, that he had found it a di disadvantage, and that he had felt that photography had a social aspect that should be developed. He summed this up with, The photographer should be able to emerge from his darkroom occasionally into the society of others of similar tastes. He gave the example of the successful Shropshire Camera Club and described the facilities they had and suggested that the Llanetli Club should aspire to these facilities. His address must have been successful, for at the end of the meeting, Dr. Roderick formally proposed that a society be formed in Llanetli. Mr. Miller seconded, and it was unanimously carried. It was at this meeting it was decided that ladies should be admitted to the society, but that, at the present, membership should be for amateurs only. A week later, on the 21st of May, 1891, a second meeting was convened when a set of rules that had been drafted by the committee was read and the decision was made to meet on the first Thursday of each month. This must have been a long and busy meeting for plans were made for monthly excursions, the first to take place during the next month, and an account was given reporting that many ladies had shown interest in joining the society and, in the words of the speaker, wanting to practice the fascinating and fashionable art. The subscription was fixed at ten shillings and sixpence, and the question of a dark room discussed, ending with a secretary being asked to advertise for suitable rooms.
fortunately for us all, glass plates that were exposed by early members of the LPS in the 1890s are still around. Many were placed for safekeeping in the Uclinetti Library by the family of Gwilym and J. H. Williams, and we are now able to see some of these reproduced. These glass plates show us the enthusiasm and passion with which these early photographers went about recording their hometown, surrounding area, and the people who lived there, a passion that can be still found in the present members of the Planetary Photographic Society. John H. Williams, whose photographs these were, went on to become an influential member of the town. He served on the town council and in 1936 became mayor of Flanetley. He was an active and long-standing member of Park Church, where he was their organist for many years, and where the family dedicated a stained glass window in his memory. Flanetley had a booming photographic trade and the number of studios was rapidly expanding. By 1897, there was enough trade for six photographic enterprises in Flanetli, and these photographers described themselves as photographic artists. Three were based in Bourne Street, the Victoria Studio, the Excelsior Studio, and the studio of McLucas & Co. Much of this early business was based upon the production of the carte de visite. During the 1860s, the craze for these cards became immense. This carte de visit was from the Planetary Studio of McLucas & Co., located in Vaughan Street. Carte de visit were albumum prints, the paper being treated with the albumum found in the white of eggs, and it is on record that in Britain at this time, half a million eggs were being delivered yearly to one photographic studio alone. One of the photographic journals printed recipes for using the egg yolks left over after the whites had been used for photographic purposes. It was said that one supplier of album and paper alone was using 60,000 eggs a day. Album and printing paper continued to be in general use until the turn of the century when gelatine paper began to replace it. The card to visit was followed by the larger cabinet card. This cabinet photograph is of Frank Probert brother of the photographer W. G. Probert, and loaned by his granddaughter, Marjorie Whitty. W. G. Probert took over one of the studios in Vaughan Street, and Marjorie is a current and long-standing member of the Planetary Photographic Society. Francis Frith was a Quaker and owner of a wholesale grocery business in Liverpool, but his passion was photography. He sold the business in 1855 for £200,000, enabling him to travel and take photographs. As railway travel became more popular in Britain in the 1860s, Francis Frith set out to photograph every city, town and village in Britain, and sold the photos through his chain of shops. In the 1970s, when the business was wound up, Harold Prescott, chief librarian of the Public Library, bought the Frith Flanetley collection for the library and describing his purchase, he said, It was a real windfall. Many of the photographs date back to the 19th century and are literally worth more than their weight in gold. All are in mint condition. In 1889, George Eastman used a newly invented film with a base that was flexible, unbreakable and could be rolled. By the 20th century, cameras had improved so much that they were far easier to use, and so they became a household item. They were no longer the prerogative of the professional photographer or the amateur enthusiast using photographic plates and toxic chemicals. They were now very simple box cameras loaded with film and owned by amateur photographers wanting to document everyday life. 
Eastman's Kodak camera went on to the market with the slogan, You press the button, we do the rest. Photography became available for the mass market in 1901 with the introduction of the Kodak Brownie. Now anyone could take a photograph and leave the complex parts of the process to others. By 1914 and the outbreak of the First World War, there were cameras in the hands of a great number of people. These people were going to experience events they could never have imagined, and they were going to enter this new world with a means of recording it in a very immediate way. One of these new camera owners was a Flintley nurse, Mary Jane Hughes. She experienced the war in two continents and created a lasting photographic record of her experiences. Nurse Hughes, through her photography, shared her experiences with her family back in Flanetli and created a co collection that is today an important historical documentation. The 1920s saw a thriving photographic society meeting in the comparatively new YMCA building in Stepney Street, Flanetley. They met weekly and had a very full and popular program. In December 1922, the society extended the social side of its activities with a very successful whist drive and dance at the YMCA. And from the 1920s to the outbreak of the Second World War, the photographic society continued to meet in the YMCA. Reporting on the previous meeting, the Flanetlian County Guardian, June 8, 1922, stated, It was decided to hold a contact print competition at a very early date, the competition being arranged in such a way as to give the novices a splendid chance of securing the valuable prizes which are offered. Other meetings included a demonstration of stereoscopic photography and an exhibition of prints from the Cardiff Camera Club. There were now many Flanetli families with cameras, using them to record family life, holiday experiences and events in Flanetli. However, despite the ease of having their film commercially developed and printed, it was still a costly business and pretty well confined to families with a higher income. At the outbreak of World War II, the society was still meeting at the YMCA, but wartime shortages left photographic materials in very short supply and the club's activities had to be curtailed. As soon as the conditions started to return to normal, members became active again, and in 1946 there began two new traditions. Each month, the best three prints from the monthly competition was displayed at the town library, and a 40-year tradition was established of annual exhibitions at the Mansion House in Park Howard. These are examples of prints by the Flanetli Photographic Society members D.J. Campbell and were accepted by the Swansea and Mumbles Camera Club for the All Welsh Exhibition in 1947. Around this time, the Welsh Photographic Federation came into being, a federation serving the camera clubs of Central and South Wales, of which the Flanetli Photographic Society became an active member. The WPF brought into existence the Welsh Salon of Photography, a prestigious annual exhibition of images selected from entries submitted from all the camera clubs of Central and South Wales. It has always been an honour to have a photograph selected for this Salon, and the Society is proud of the fact that its members have been represented every year since its formation. Example 
of images from Llanelli members selected for the Welsh Federation Salon are stored in the Society's archives and date back to the early 60s. Here is a selection of these. To celebrate the Festival of Britain, the Llanelli and District Photographic Society mounted an exhibition of members' prints at the Mansion House, Park Howard. There were about 140 photographs on display, and the Star newspaper described it as one of the best contributions to the local Festival of Britain celebrations. For around 12 years after the end of the war, the Society led a nomadic existence. During this time, the chairman of the club was H.R. Grice, and members met in a number of different locations that included rooms in Water Street, part of the Thomas Arms, a room in the Art School, and also the Liberal Club. In 1959-1960, for the first time in its long history, the Society created for itself a permanent home. This had been the ambition of members for 70 years. Behind large and imposing wooden doors, the stable of Llanetli House had been empty and neglected since before the Second World War. Members of the Society saw the loft above the stables as a potential home for the expanding Society. A rental was agreed, and they set about transforming it into a permanent headquarters. Norman Lewis, writing about this event, said, And what a revelation that was! providing proof of a remarkable DIY exercise which illustrated that society members' abilities as photographers were matched by their skills as carpenters, painters and decorators. Thirty members of the society with 150 pounds of materials and their own labour created a permanent headquarters to be proud of. They replastered the walls and boarded up the rafters without losing the character of the old building and the acquisition of railway carriage seats provided a very comfortable environment. Members created one long room with carpeted floors, electric heaters, fluorescent lighting and a small kitchen in one corner. This room was used as a cinema, lecture room and studios, and facilities also included a dark room. On reflection, members considered this to be one of the most productive periods in the society's history. Norman Lewis writing of this time said membership increased and the creative outpourings of members reached new heights as the rapidly changing techniques brought along by the wizardry of modern technology 
were put to often stunning effect. The 1960s proved to be a very productive decade for the society. They had a permanent headquarters in the Mews on Bridge Street. Their annual exhibitions in Park Howard were a well-established and very popular event. And with their own dark room and studio, the standard of work was rapidly increasing, gaining a reputation both locally and throughout Wales. During this time, H.R. Grice and Selwyn Evans were chairman and secretary of the society and were two of the members who displayed their work at the Llanelli 19th Annual Exhibition in August 1969. They can be seen here during the tea break at the club rooms in the Mews, and in that year, H.R. Grice held a one-man show, the following prints being a sample of his work. development of the town centre in the early 1970s brought with it a devastating blow for the society. During the major extension to the Woolworths Vaughan Street store, the Flanetling House stable block was demolished, and with it went all the facilities that had been created with such hard work and dedication. Harry Davis, writing in his weekly column at Flanetli District Notes in the Flanetli Star, reported, With a coach house raised to the ground, the society was again homeless but where lesser organisations might well have dissolved, it proved the quality of its moral fibre and survived. The club found a new home at a disused flat on the top floor of the YMCA. Members once more set about to clear, reconstruct, repair and decorate. The initiative was led by Hubert Lewis, the Society's Secretary, Ken Jones and Colin Morgan. Describing the work that they did at the YMCA, Hubert Lewis said, we had to go up on the roof to put up new slates. There is a parapet on the Stepney Street side of the roof, but we took no chances, and we went up rope together like mountaineers. Members created a lecture room from two living rooms, a dark room from a kitchen, and a studio from a bedroom. In 1985, after almost 40 years of annual exhibitions in Park Howard, the camera club decided upon a change of venue. For the first time, the exhibition of members' work was shown in the Neville Gallery of the Tlenetli Library. Unfortunately, it was marred by a shocking incident. Vandals entered the gallery and damaged a number of the prints. Some were torn, others sprayed with aerosol paint, while one was stolen. Nevertheless, the exhibition was a resounding success, with far more visitors than in previous years. Jeff Connell was awarded the prize for Best Print, for a picture taken at a tennis tournament. The photograph shows the judge, Brian Jennings, sent her. Chairman of the club, Chorus Edwards and Secretary, Hubert Lewis Wright, with the best print, Jeff Connell's tennis player. In 1988, the award winners were, from left to right, Ken Jones, John Reed, Clive Martin, Chorus Edwards and Hubert Lewis. And in the anniversary year, 2016, Chorus, who had filled the role of chairman in 1985 and held various posts throughout the years, is still a loyal, active and productive member of the society. Claiming 1889 as the year of the founding of the Flanetli Photographic Society, the club celebrated its centenary in 1989. A photograph was taken for the commemorative brochure for the centenary exhibition, and this was also the year when the Flanetli Club played host to the annual Welsh Photographic Federation Salon. The town mayor, Mathomwy Jones, held a reception for members in the mayor's parlour, and Ken Jones claimed the winning print, Coal Famine. The 1990s saw the Flanetli Photographic Society once more deprived of its home. As the condition of the YMCA buildings deteriorated, 
and as the converted flat became unsafe for use, the members were forced to move down to the floor below. Although they tried to make it seem like home with the upholstered railway carriage seats that had been theirs since the Llanelli house days, they had to leave behind the dark room and studio that they had worked so hard to create. However, the standard of work continued to improve, even expanding into moving pictures, and the tradition of the annual exhibition remained unbroken. Dave Roberts, Jennifer Harris, Corus Edwards and Graham Harris were among those promoting the introduction of the video camera into the LPS in the 1990s, and Max Davis, Jennifer Harris, Ray Reese and Graham Harris were among those exhibiting prints at the 1997 exhibition. In 1998, LPS exhibition, the best print in show went to Ken Jones, and in 1998, Ken was the club's longest serving member. Ken died in 2010, but his memory lives on in a beautiful trophy presented by his nephew, Mark Mathias, and awarded to the winner of an annual competition for monochrome prints. The club moved into the 21st century, well established and in the digital format. Ray Rees became the club's president, and in 2015 was both president and chairman. From 2000 onwards, the annual exhibition continued to be held in the Neville Gallery of the Llanelli Public Library. But in addition, the club began to mount exhibitions in the St. Ethley Shopping Centre. Members also continued the tradition of nights out and about with cameras on summer evenings and various social events throughout the year. From 2008, members of the Society began to gain major photographic distinctions. Prestigious awards opened to amateur photographers from the UK and from around the world. The distinction of the AWPF, the Associate of the Welsh Photographic Federation, has been gained by three members. In 2008, Phil Worsley was awarded a, an AWPF for panel work that also went towards his successful first-class honours degree in photography. And in 2010, Arthur Mallet was awarded the distinction 
for a panel of images taken during a visit to Hong Kong, and Joyce Mollett, who had made many visits to India, was successful with a panel of work comprising of portraits taken in Gujarat and Rajasthan. Joyce, following in the footsteps of Selwyn Evans, ARPS club secretary in the late 1950s and 1960s, had also gained an ARPS distinction, associate of the Royal Photographic Society. She was awarded her LRPS, Licentiate of the Royal Photographic Society, in 2010 for a travel panel of 10 prints, and her ARPS in 2011 for a travel panel of 15 environmental portraits. In the year of the 125th birthday celebration, the club meets in the Davin Community Hall, continuing in the tradition put in place by the founder members in 1891 of weekly meetings, competitions, visiting speakers, field trips and social events. This concludes the audio-visual presentation, but not the story as that, we hope, will continue for many years to come.